Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. How we doing, people? Cheech from Fly Fish Food here. Um, we have a really cool fly to tie right now. Um, we've been fishing carp quite a bit, and once you catch a few nice carp on a fly rod, it gets hard to get out of your mind. So, um, we're gonna tie a fly uh, that has a lot of movement. Super simple to tie. Um, and you can vary the weight and everything. It looks like this. This one's kind of chewed up a little bit, but it's got a rabbit, rabbit dubbing loop. It's got the uh, bead chain eyes and some predator legs in the back. Anyway, I've, I've used a whole bunch of hooks there. This, that one I just showed you is a carp specific hook. This one's actually designed for intruders. But it will do the trick just fine, even with that bend. In fact, the bend's going to have a nice spot for me to rest those eyes. So I'm going to start with just chartreuse Danville 140 thread. And I've got large silver bead chain eyes. Now you can use medium if you want a really super light fly. Or you can use the brass barbell eyes that we have as well. If you're fishing in a little bit deeper water but I'm gonna put those in leaving just a bit of room maybe uh, at one eye length kind of like this on the fly um, when I tie those in and I'll just give them some really snug wraps one thing with carp flies is you want to try to avoid the stinky glues as much as possible so super glue um any of the stinky resins head cement but this stuff the loon water-based head cement has literally no smell to it so that's probably not going to lock it in quite as well as super glue would but it will at least give us a little bit better hold than just plain thread okay from here i'm going to take the hook and kind of turn it down like that because on on this fly it's going to ride hook point up and the tails are going to kind of come off the hook almost vertically. So I'll take my thread and wrap it back. We're going to go right about to there. Okay, now the, this is a, a Magnum Predator leg in Chartreuse and these are like 10, 12 inches long. They're designed for like musky flies and stuff. But I'm just going to tie a section on each side of the hook shank back here. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie them in so that I have to wrap them down about this far. And you'll see why I do that. I'm actually going to cover up the body and I want the, the back of it to be a little bit more bulky than the front. So once I have that tied in, I'm going to cut it off just kind of wherever and then I'm going to stick the other one on the other side of the hook shank and once I have this on I'll kind of I'll rotate it to show you what I was talking about <clears throat> so I'll trim that the same length and now I've got two tails coming kind of split off of that, uh, the back of the hook. Okay, from here I'm going to put my hook back at a normal resting posture. And I'm going to use a material that's super cool. This is uh, vinyl rib. So it's kind of like D-rib. We sell them both. Um, but the vinyl rib's a little bit bigger. The medium is the biggest size that we sell. I think it goes medium, and then there's a nymph size, and then there's a small size. It's kind of weird sizing, but medium is the big one. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and the reason I'm using this uh, UTC 140 is you can see that it's a flat thread. And before I wrap the body on this, I'm going to make a, a pretty smooth body, and you'll see what I'm saying. But I don't know if how well you can see this. Let's see but 
it's a D-shaped vinyl. So I'm going to take the flat part of this and I'm going to put that down along the, the hook shank and I'm going to use my fingers to guide that right along the, this is going to be the bottom of the fly. I've got that tied in all the way to my legs and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin my thread counterclockwise to uh, flatten it out and then I'm just going to cover up all these gaps and make a nice smooth base to wrap the thread over and now you can see that the back half of this fly is thicker than the, the front half and that's the effect that I'm going for on this fly I don't know that it necessarily matters. I just kind of liked how it looked. So you, you need to have this relatively smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect like when you're tying wire on a copper john or anything like that. That's, that's plenty smooth for, for what we're doing here. Now I'm just going to take this, uh, this D-rib or this uh, vinyl nymph rib and I'm going to take that and wrap it along the body here. Squeaky. So you can see that makes a really super cool body. And I mean you can you can use that technique to do stonefly bodies, mayfly bodies, all different types of of flies. Okay, so I'll trim that off. And now for the kind of the collar and the head, it's just going to be made out of zonker strip. And uh, I'm going to stick it in a dubbing loop. This by far is the most complicated part of this fly. And to make it easy, see I just have a chartreuse green zonker strip. With our lighting here, it looks really really light and then I've got you know we have these Stonfo clips but this little micro Petitjean clip is really good for this it gets just the right amount of hair so what I'm going to do is just kind of preen those fibers down and stick my clip on those hairs so you can see that I've got it clipped down kind of further down on the hair because I don't want this to be the full length of the rabbit. So now that I've got the the rabbit cut off, I'm going to make a loop and stick it in there. Okay, so I've got the the Stonfo dubbing loop tool, stick that in there. And I'm just going to put this all the way in here, and as I pull it back, the thread's just going to kind of lock on to that, uh, that rabbit. And if I pull the dubbing tool pretty tight, it's going to cinch down on the rabbit, and I can kind of line it up with my fingers a little better. Okay, so this is where you can kind of gauge how long you want the rabbit. And I, I want it a little shorter than what I had tied in, so I'm just going to make the adjustment and then re-trim. And once you have it here, I like to pinch it um, at the bottom of the base while I'm twisting it up and then slowly let off so none of the fibers come out and now I can give it a good twist. Okay, before I, I put it in there, I'm just going to kind of brush it out so no fibers are, are stuck in there. Um, and I'm going to do basically one full wrap behind the eyes and then I should only have to come up on the bottom of this but I, I should only have to come up through the eyes on the bottom of the fly and then have enough for a few wraps on the on the front of those eyes and it it should uh, cover up any gaps in the eyes there Anyway, so once I have it to here, I'm going to moisten my fingers a little bit and get those fibers out of the way. And 
build up a bit of a head and whip finish it. And then when you're done, you just uh, put some more head cement on it. Anyway, it's a, it's a really simple fly. The only uh, intermediate part, I guess, is just the head. Um, and, you know, I've been using squirrel, rabbit. You can use any type of fur that's uh, on a zonker strip like that. Or you could even, even use a synthetic dubbing. But the idea is to, to find feeding fish and this this fly will kind of sit in the water on those beads and the tails will stick right up. Anyway, um, give this a try. Uh, try it in the, the natural color as well. well. I typically like to have something natural like this and then something that they can see as well and just kind of watch how the fish react to it. Anyway, tie it up. Go catch some carp.